Psalm 92, verse 12 and 13. All right, so let's uh, read verse 12 and 13 together. The righteous, the righteous shall, shall flourish like the palm tree. You shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Father, we would understand your word this morning. It would challenge us. It would help us to, to live for you. Pray for every Christian here, everyone that knows that they're born again by the, uh, the, the work of Christ. We invited him to uh, be their Savior. We pray, Lord, for them that they especially would uh, understand that some of the things that we need to do to grow up. Not just to be stale in our Christian walk, but to grow and to uh, reach for higher ground. And we pray this and pray for those that have not trusted you as Savior and those that are lost, that you would bring them to Christ. And we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. Let's read there verse 12, our main uh, passage here. It's just the first part of that verse says the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. I will let you know that I have not seen too many palm trees in live and in person. Um, where I go vacationing, they usually don't have palm trees. Uh, they usually stay around Saskatchewan or into the northern states. I believe I was in Houston once, but I can't remember palm trees there. It might, might have been, but I have not ever been to Hawaii or some of those places. But you see pictures of them. <coughs> and so that's what we're talk, looking at this morning. It's a palm tree. And like I so said, I don't have a lot of uh, personal experience understanding of palm trees and raising a palm tree, but um, so what I'm going to look at this morning is uh, compare our life with a palm tree. And here are a number of scriptures in the palm, about the palm tree. And we want to flourish. It says flourish like the palm tree. And there's some things in our life that we can do to flourish like the palm tree. Now, you've seen, um, when I look, think of palm trees, one of the things I think of is, you know, vacation spot. But another thing that often comes to mind is hurricanes. And <clears throat> palm trees seem to be in these hurricane areas. And when they show these pictures on the news about hurricanes, often there are palm trees and they're, you know, waving. I mean, they're just huge wind. But they stay standing, you know, they don't crack and fall. I mean, some of them might, but a lot of them are just waving the wind. And there's this huge, tall uh, trunk, and way up on the top of the leaves. So it's not like some of, the, uh, some of the trees, the whole tree is full of leaves, and the wind just grabs it and <laughs> knocks the whole tree down. And you know, most of the trees, <coughs> the, the leaves are way up on the top of the palm tree. And there are different uh, kinds of palm trees with different fruit on them. You know, some have dates and some have coconuts, and this is what I've been told. Um, I always thought there's only one kind of palm tree, but I guess there are different kinds of palm trees. And in the in the Bible days, in, in the the psalmist would mainly be thinking about the palm trees in the, in the area around Israel. And uh, many of those would be date palm trees, but there were other ones somewhere in the desert. And we'll look at some uh, passages in, in the book of Exodus uh, when Moses went out of Egypt. Uh, and then they had no water. They came to a place with palm trees. And so we're going to look this <coughs> uh, today, the whole day. Uh, we're going to set aside to think of the palm trees. I'm not sure how that relates to Canada Day. You know, I'm probably supposed to have a Canada Day sermon today. I don't know. <laughs> but you'll have to make the connection somehow in your own mind and heart. But uh, flourishing like a palm tree. If you're taking notes, that's going to be the title. Flourishing like a palm tree. 
Now, when a, a tree does not flourish, it's very weak. You know, a flourishing tree is strong and tall and, and green and you know, robust and it's valuable you know, when it's flourishing. It may produce fruit and that's very helpful to the owner or the ones that are close to it. Some, some trees are for shade. You know, some trees are for birds to put their nests in. Uh, and all trees are beautiful. There was a poem, there's nothing more beautiful than a tree. That's not exactly how it goes. But maybe you, you <coughs> had that poem in, in school and you had to memorize uh, that uh, poem about the, there's nothing more beautiful than a tree. Uh, uh, <coughs> so all trees are beautiful, just the way God has created them. And all trees point to the, you know, the, just the wisdom of God. And if you study the tree and all that's involved, the trunk and the branches, the leaves, the fruit, the roots, all of that's connected. They all have a purpose. And everything has a purpose and is needful. You see the Creator in that. But there are some trees that do not produce very well. They start to wither. In Luke chapter 13, if you go to Luke chapter 13, Kind of see the other side. Some trees do not flourish. And Jesus spoke about a tree that doesn't flourish. God doesn't like them. It says in verse 6, Luke chapter 13, verse 6, uh, Jesus, it says, he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree. It could be a palm tree in that as well, or any kind of tree. But he had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. In other words, it was not flourishing. And it says, Then said he to the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? <laughs> Why is it just taking up space? Let's cut it down. Let's put something else in its place. Something that will flourish. And that's what oftentimes the owner of a tree like that will say, Why do I even keep this thing? Well, let's just get rid of it, cut her down, and let's start over. My neighbor had a tree. It wasn't a fruit tree right in his front yard, and I don't know why he did that, but he cut it down. <laughs> Just cut her down, and, and then it all was a stump, and he never took the stump. Some people you know, come with a, a stump grinder, grind up the stump, and he never did that. He just cut her down, and then he tried to, you know, make flowers around and make it look nice. You know, like this, this old trunk right there. Now, finally, I think he, he figured out how to make it look nice enough to be on the front of the yard. But, you know, he just cut it out. There was something he didn't like about it. Maybe it gave too much shade. Well, there's some, some trees that block the view in our windows, and sometimes it, uh, it's not a medium purpose. And you know what? This parable wasn't about trees. This parable really wasn't, Jesus wasn't, uh, given a parable about trees is given a parable about people. And sometimes people are like that tree. Mm -hmm. And they are, do not flourish. They are weak. They are withering. And they serve no purpose to God. Mm -hmm. Do you know that God owns you? If you are a true born-again believer, the Bible says you have been bought with a price. Mm -hmm. The price is the very blood of Jesus Christ. He bought you by the blood of Christ, bought your soul, bought your body, and you are His. And now He's looking to see if you're flourishing. You're like a palm tree, and He wants you to flourish like a palm tree. He doesn't want you to be withering like the fig tree, <laughs> this fig tree. That's why if you go now, 
uh, later on. But you know, the answer, we're going to look at the answer to that, but the main answer is that you're not abiding in Christ. John chapter 15 talks about abiding in, in Christ and Him and you. Mm -hmm. And if we would abide in Christ, we would be flourishing. But we'll look at some things. Uh, and that's going to be our first thing we're going to look at. But let's go back uh, over there to Psalm 92. <coughs> and what are the conditions? What are the things that have to happen for us to flourish? Like the palm tree. There are some things here in Psalms that will give us some ideas and also in other parts of the Bible. So we're going to look at how to flourish like the palm tree. First thing we see there in Psalm 92, verse 1, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. The first thing we need to do, or to be, is to be righteous. If we're going to flourish, we must be righteous. Not unrighteous, not full of sin, not full of wickedness and evil, but righteous. The world today is in darkness, and they live in unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. And some of the people that even think that they are pretty good, they live in unrighteousness because they're living in their own righteousness, mm -hmm. not the righteousness of Christ. Now, this is Old Testament, but as we go through the Bible, uh, we notice that when we trust, we're only in our own righteousness, that is mainly unrighteousness to God. Okay? Our righteousness in God's eyes is unrighteousness. It's filthy rags. It's of no value. And that the truth of that is expressed, probably the best place that that truth is expressed in it is in uh, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And how we need to be found not in our righteousness, which is in God's sight unrighteousness, but in the righteousness of Christ. I encourage you to mark this in your Bible, memorize it, make sure you know it. Now in my Bible, I can often say, Good idea to use the same Bible, and use a King James Bible, but use the same Bible for your study and when you come to church. For uh, it, you know, if you're kind of reading, you know, you can use other Bibles for reading, but when you're really getting into it and trying to uh, get into the Word of God and study it and learn it, use the same Bible. Because that way, your mind. An amazing mind, it'll remember where that verse is that you're looking for, which part of the which part of the page, which side of the page it's on. And when I think of this verse in my Bible, it's in the far right corner, right at the bottom, very bottom on the right side. That's where it is. No, oh, I know that. And so if I'm thinking about a verse about righteousness and how, you know, I cannot be living in my own righteousness, but I need the righteousness of Christ, I know it's down there, on the, the right-hand side, very bottom, even if I don't know it's exactly, uh, exactly which chapter and verse, I know it's in the popcorn, you know, Galatians, Philippians, no, I know it's in that area. All I do is I just flip around and I look just at that far right bottom corner. I just flip my Bible and I find it. Why? Because I use the same Bible. And I, I'm studying with the same Bible and I, I got, and I, I think all our minds are like, I don't think I'm unique in that way. I think everybody has that kind of, it's like a, a little bit like a photographic memory. We can re at least remember where things are in the Bible. So that's just a little uh, encouragement for Bible study and, and help. But here's what it says, Philippians 3, verse 9. And be found in him, that's in Christ, 
Not having mine own righteousness. Why is that? Because my, unrighteous, my righteousness is unrighteousness. Which is of the law. In other words, my righteousness is my, uh, my efforts to keep the law. Here's the law. Here's me. And I know I should keep the law. So I'm going to try to keep the law. That's what I do in my righteousness. And God says, that's filthy rings. That's, that's not going to work. And that's what, that's what every religious person does without Christ. Yeah. That's the problem with all the false religions. Because mm -hmm. it's their own effort against the law. Now their law might be different. There may be Sharia law. You know, the Muslims say it could be Sharia law. It could be Buddhist law. It could be the law of their conscience. An atheist. An atheist, he, he has the law in his conscience. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't admit that, but he does have the law. He, they all, all say, well, I'm moral. But they always break their own law. Whatever law it is, they can never keep it. But that's their righteousness, trying to keep whatever law it is in their particular religion. And never works. Because there's no power in that. Yeah. It's, it's human power in the flesh. And the flesh, in the flesh there's no good thing. Yeah. So that's why all other religions never any, amount to anything in God's eyes. Yeah. They're all withered trees. They're all no good. He's going to just come along and cut it to the ground. If you die without Christ and without His righteousness, then someday it's not just cutting, cutting it down, it's going to be cast into the fire. Yeah. That's called hell or the lake of fire. It's going to be cast into the lake of fire if we only have our own righteousness. Some people say, well, that's horrible. Well, we do it to trees. You know, people are so hypocritical. They say, how could God send a person to hell? Well, when you have a, an old tree that doesn't you know, produce and it's all withered, where do you take it? You throw it in the fire. At least, you know. Or you, you know, you just throw it in the fire. And, and that's what God's going to do. Mm -hmm. Well, let's continue the verse. That was the negative side, but there's a positive side to this verse. It says, but... But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Now remember he's saying, I don't want to be found in my own righteousness, but in the righteousness which is of God by faith. It's a lock of faith, it's a righteousness of faith. And this is not just talking about uh, our justification by faith, the moment we're saved. Our standing, this is also talking about our daily walk with God. Even in our daily walk, we cannot look at our own uh, self and <clears throat> in our own effort try to keep the law. We need the righteousness of Christ. And that only comes by faith and trusting in Christ and, and allowing Christ to control our life, abiding in Christ. Oh, this is so important. This is the only way we're going to flourish. Not having our own righteousness, but the righteousness of Christ. And how do we get that? We confess all sin. We, we search our heart for sin. We deal with our sin. We confess it. We forsake it. We repent. And we turn to Jesus Christ and we say, Lord, and you put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then what? Don't make provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. That's what we've been looking at. I guess that's the connection. <laughs> that's what we've been looking at the last few uh, Sundays. But you see the connection. It's not our own righteousness. So we're talking about a, a tree that flourishes. How can we be a flourishing palm tree? A tree, you know, where, where people want to go and, and they want to go there to vacation. Why? Because they love the beauty of the palm tree. There's something about it. You don't get it here in Saskatchewan and in another place. They just want to be in that, those areas. Something about the, the, I mean, the, 
how tall it is, and how beautiful it is, and how strong it is, whatever, you know, so many things about it, the fruit on it, people want to be in their as vocation places. <laughs> That's where people go on holiday. They get away from it all, and there's those palm trees, beautiful. And they're flourishing. That's what God wants in us. You know, people are attracted to those palm trees, but so is God attracted to a, a, a person that's like this palm tree that's flourishing. And the first thing that he's looking for, God's looking that we would have the righteousness of Christ in us. We're walking by his righteousness, not our own effort. I, I'm going to say this, I'm, to, you know, I'm not going to say a million times, but I've, I'm sure I've said it a hundred times. I'm sure I've said it a hundred times. And that is, the Christian life is not hard. How many of you heard that? <laughs> when you say, oh, the Christian life, it's so hard. You know, you know why you're saying that? Why, why a person says that? And I used to say that. And I still sometimes say it. You know why a person says, oh, the Christian life is so hard. Or, or somebody that's not saved, they look at a Christian and say, how can I live that life? It's so hard. You know why they say that? Because they're living in their own righteousness, mm -hmm. in their own efforts. And it is hard. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. So if you're one of those, oh, it's so hard to stop sinning. So I got this habit, I've got this sin, I've got this difficulty in my, you know, this sin that just keeps, that's so hard to get rid of. You know why? It's in your own efforts. The Christian life is not hard. That's why Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. The Christian life is easy. It's easy. <laughs> It's easy. It's a place of rest. Haven't I said that a hundred times? But it's hard because we're in the first part of verse 9. We're still, you know, <clears throat> living like I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm trying to keep the law. I'm trying to obey the commandments. You can't do it. You must. You, know, you must have Christ in you and letting Him take over your life and let Him rule your life. Another way to put that is being filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit, it's the same, it's the same thing. And that is that you have, you're under the, the yielding and the direction of the Holy Spirit and not your own spirit, not your own flesh. And so the first thing you need is to be righteous, but your righteousness must come from Jesus Christ as you're filled with the Spirit. Now, number two, now some of these things I have preached on, but it, it's just kind of interesting to relate them to the palm tree. And sometimes when we have an illustration, it helps us to remember. So the palm tree, the Bible says, we're only going to flourish when we're righteous. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Number two, you know what the palm tree does? You know what a flourishing palm tree does? And you can think of a palm tree. You ever notice that, again, there's the large trunk. What do you notice on, on most of the trunk? There are no leaves. All the leaves are on the top. No leaves. You know, on the bottom part. Do you know what happens? The palm tree gets rid of its whole leaves. And that's what we see. We've seen this before in Ephesians chapter 4. You know what the old leaves represent? The flesh and the lust thereof. And it says in verse 22 of Ephesians 4, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man put it off. Get rid of the old leaves. <laughs> and it says there, which are corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. So those deceitful lusts are like the old leaves on the palm tree. If the old leaves on the palm tree stay on the palm tree, 
It's not going to flourish. They're going to just grab and, and pull in the sap. It's not going to be beautiful. It's not going to bear fruit. So what does it do? Uh, it drops them. Now, a palm tree knows enough now, if these old leaves aren't helpful, I've got to drop them. Who taught that to them? Well, I guess God did, right? God, God built it into them. God designed it that way. But for us as Christians, we have to make a choice. We have to decide to do it. Okay? Well, it's not going to happen. In other words, it's not going to happen automatically. God has given us a, a will, an emotion, and, and He's given us a mind, and thoughts, and a soul, and ability to choose. And we have to choose to get rid of the old deceitful lusts. So those deceitful lusts are like the old leaves. There's just not one of them. It's not the flesh, it's the deceitful lusts of the flesh. And one by one, we have to get rid of them. It might be a, a lust for food, you know, or maybe not just food, just for junk food. That's all I, you know, all, all I want is to eat junk food and sugary food and donuts and, you know, they're good in its place, but that's not going to, you know, that's not going to make you healthy. It's not going to be for the temple of the Holy God that your body is. It's not going to... You are not going to flourish uh, just eating junk food. But it could be that. could be your lust. The lust of the flesh. So you know what? The, the flesh likes sugar and it likes fat. Fat is in french fries. Potato chips. Okay, must they go on? And onion rings. You know, that's what your, your flesh likes at. Donuts. Donuts are a combination of fat and sugar and all kinds of things. And uh, I'm sorry if you're an owner of Tim Hortons, but that's what it is. <laughs> I'm sorry if that's what you, <clears throat> you know, if you, if you need it, and, and you might, you know, you might get upset and not offended, but I'm, I think this is the Word of God. If you have to have a donut every day for breakfast, you have a lust problem. That's the lust of the flesh. You need, you need to shed that leaf. Shed the leaf. And eat some healthy breakfast. Something uh, that would give your body some, some energy. Even if you have, you know, one of these green juices. You know, that, that'd give you something at least for the day. I, you know, I believe, and this is me, this is me, but I believe it, it, it's even better to fast for breakfast than to have a donut for breakfast. You know, I think you'd be better off. I know I am. If I have a sugary breakfast, I've got a headache all morning. I, if I don't have breakfast at all, I've got a clear mind. Maybe that's just my body, my, but I think that's the way we're, you know, we're not to have. But I'm saying that's a whole lot. That's not the only lust. There are many deceitful lusts. Some are, you know, pride. I need to be the one that always makes the decision. Pride. <clears throat> I am the smartest. I am the greatest. You know, listen to me. I don't need to listen to you. Pride. That, that's another, that's part of lust. Uh, lust, there's, there's uh, sexual lusts and lust of fornication and Pornography, those are lusts that, you know, people, there are some that, they're addicted to some of that stuff, and they, they can't go a, a day or maybe an hour without looking at their phone and looking at some uh, pornographic, uh, new, you know, all that kind of thing. That, those are lusts. I mean, those are deceitful lusts, they're deceitful things, and we need to put them away. We have a list. Yeah, at, the, you know, <coughs> at the back of the room, you know, the back of the track rack, we have lists of lusts, and we go, you need to go through them. So they're sort of physical lusts, but they're sort of spiritual lusts, like envy. Envy is a lust. You're lusting for something you don't have. Covetousness is a lust. 
jealousy, a lust. See? Hate, hatefulness, unkindness, anger, all those uh, tell you there's a lust involved. So what's the point? If you're going to flourish, you've got to get rid of those dead leaves. They're just taking up space in your life and they're not there for anything. The Bible says that when, <coughs> when sin is conceived, it bringeth forth death. The Bible says the way of sin is death. And that's not just about your salvation of the soul. That's about the salvation in your walk with God every, every moment of the day. Anytime you sin as a Christian, there's going to be some destruction in your spiritual life. So the second thing is you must drop the deceitful lust. Drop the light, the dead leaf. Okay? If you want to relate it, you must drop the deceitful lust like the palm tree drops its dead leaves. Then let's go to Jeremiah 10, verse 5. Jeremiah 10, verse 5. And so, the number one and two are very related. You have to drop the lust and the sin and confess it, number one. And then, number two, you need the righteousness of Christ. You need to put on His righteousness and live by His righteousness under His control. That's what we mean here. Jeremiah 10, verse 5 is a verse about the palm tree. It gives us another clue of how to flourish. It says, they are upright as the palm tree. Now, this is actually a passage about uh, your know, idols. And they're choosing a tree for an idol. To make an idol. But my point is this. A palm tree, you know, <laughs> they even make them, up, make them out of idols because why? Because they're nice and strong and upright. Just, just you know, I'm at high. You know, if they want to make a really high, tall idol, got to use a palm tree. Not going to use a little, you know, the vine, you know, the grapevine, or, or the little cactus, or some of those things. The palm tree. But in terms of flourishing like the palm tree, the Bible says you need to be upright. To flourish, number three, you have to grow upright. Grow higher and higher and higher and closer to heaven. Your mind must be on heaven. Set your mind on the things of God, not the things of the earth. Set your affections on things above. Colossians chapter 3. Looking unto Jesus. Where is he? He's up in heaven. Yes, I know he's everywhere, I know he's in our heart, but <laughs> the other side of it is he's up in heaven at the right hand of the Father. And we're to, to looking up to Jesus. You know what the palm tree does? It grows higher and higher and higher. It drops the old leaves at the bottom. Where are the good leaves? The good leaves are way at the top. Getting closer and closer and closer to where? To heaven. And farther and farther and farther away from where? From the earth. That's how you're going to flourish. And if you get farther and farther away from the world and all its pleasures and all its lusts and all its um, goods that it gives you, and they're <coughs> it's deceitful, well, if I get a better home, if I get a better car, I'll be happy. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. You ask anybody, any lost person. You won't be happier. You'll just be more envious. You'll be a little bit more content, but you'll never be happy. Why? Because you're setting your affections on things below. And those never give true happiness and true joy. And so what does a palm tree do? Palm, palm tree is pretty wise the way God designed it. The leaves, the green leaves, the part that's really growing, that's really flourishing is way up the top, getting closer and closer to heaven, farther and farther from the earth. And that's what you need to do to flourish. Okay, well, let's, let's read those verses from Colossians, because they fit in here. Colossians chapter 3. 
Colossians chapter 3. It's saying, how do you flourish like the palm tree? You know, the palm tree everybody wants to go see. You know, the palm tree where all the great vacation places are. They all have palm trees. <clears throat> how do you flourish like that palm tree? Well, you need to grow upright like the palm tree. And, and your green leaves have to be higher and higher, closer to heaven, farther from the earth. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are, can you say it? Above. Above. Is that what the palm tree does? Look right. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Yeah, I know he's everywhere, but there's a special place where Christ sitteth right now. It's right up there in heaven. Set your affections on things and read it. Say everybody, above, not on things on the earth. That's what God is telling us. That's how you're going to flourish. Set your things of things of, of things above, things of spiritual things, things of God, things that are lasting, things that are going to count for, for eternity. Those things you think about. The things the Bible shows us, the things that uh, we ought to do for God, those are the things that will really last. Set your affection to the things above. That's what the palm tree does, and it flourishes. Now let's go to Exodus. Huh? <clears throat> let's look at another thing. Exodus chapter... 15, Exodus chapter 15, <clears throat> in verse 27, this is when Moses took the people out of Israel, all those plagues, and then the Passover, and they'd gone through the Red Sea. This is after, just a little bit after they went through the Red Sea, and they came to a wilderness for a few days, verse 22. They see that word wilderness? They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. <coughs> but in verse 27, they come to water. Look what it says. And they came to Elam, where were twelve wells of water. Look what else was there. And three score and ten palm trees, and they camped there by the waters. See the word waters. Waters is mentioned two times. Talk about palm trees. Why was the palm, why were the palm trees there? Because there was water. They worked in the wilderness where there was no water. Verse 22, look at the end of the verse again. There was no water and no palm trees. But where there was water, there was palm tree. I'm going to touch on that a little bit tonight as well. But in the Bible, water is a picture mainly of three things. It's a picture of Jesus Christ, the living water. It's a picture of the Holy Spirit. And it's a picture of God's Word. And you know what? <clears throat> you need those three things if you're going to flourish. You need to be by water. So number four is you need to stay near the water. The water of Jesus Christ, the water of the Holy Spirit, the water of the Word of God. And now that's, that's Sunday school material, right? <laughs> we all know that. We're all, you know, we all need to be by, but we have to put it into practice. If you want to flourish like the palm tree, Palm trees were over there where there's no water. But they, they found a place of water. And where there was water, that's where they were. Seven of them. Okay, seven is the number of, of completion. So 70 of these palm trees all together because there was water. In other words, you need to be filled with the Spirit. You need to be under its control. You need to be under the control of the Spirit as it works in you the Word of God. That's how you're going to flourish. Okay, let's go back to Psalm 92. Psalm 92. You see how almost all of this 
we've looked at before. When we looked at you know, having a real relationship with God and how, you know, how to live the Christian life, all those things we, we have been looking at, I'm just relating it to the palm tree. Sometimes when we have an illustration, you know, we, all those things sort of come together. And they orga, you know, they're organized in our mind and, and we remember them. And I trust that's what this will do. So you really think about the palm tree, then you'll realize, oh, I need to stay near water. I want to be like a palm tree. Maybe some of you are going to go to Florida. How many, how many think in this summer, how many this summer do you think you're going to go to holidays where there are palm trees? Anybody? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Where are you going to go? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Okay, good. So when you go to Las Vegas and you see the palm trees, you're going to remember this message. <laughs> That's the idea. When you, you know, when you, uh, you just go to the travel, you know, those travel agencies, and they've got all their pictures, you're going to for sure see one picture that has palm trees. When you see the palm trees, you remember what God says in his word, needs to be near water. Now, Palm trees can flourish where there is little water, but they do need some water. And we need the water of God's Word about the water of Jesus Christ and the water of the Spirit. Now, Psalm 92, verse 13 says, Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. So here it says that for you to flourish, you must be planted in the house of the Lord and in the courts of our God. Let me consider this in the courts and in the house. But in the courts were people. Now, the house of God, you know, we think of God's presence, but there's people there. And the, the palm trees... Remember, there were 70 palm trees. You know how, how palm trees flourish? They flourish when they're, they're in clusters. They flourish when they're together in, in a group. That's when they really flourish. Not when they're just one here and one over there and one over there. No, they'll grow, but they won't flourish as well. Especially in you know, where they are in wilderness and in hot areas, and, you know, where it's really hot and, and a little bit dry, they won't flourish if they're just here and there, but they're clustered together, it, just like people in the courts of God, in the house of God, in the church. So it says here that for you to flourish, the picture here is for you to flourish, you have to gather together with other palm trees. Okay? You have to be a, <coughs> together with other palm trees, with other Christians. Okay? You can't just be a loner. Oh, you can live a little bit, you know, you can kind of live the Christian life as a loner. That's not how God made you. He, he made you like the palm tree, <laughs> that we, we need each other. We need each other's uh, protection, we need each other's shade. Here's why they flourish, is because when they're in clusters and groups like that, the leaves of one will shade the leaves of the other and you know, kind of makes a canopy of shade. And, and that sh canopy of shade keeps the ground from drying out from the heat of the sun. And that's why they flourish like that. If it's just one palm tree out in the middle of nowhere, it's just got a little bit of shade. There's so much of the ground that's not shaded around it, it's not going to flourish. It might even wither and die in that kind of situation. You need to be with other believers. And cluster together with other believers. It doesn't have to be 70. I mean, you can't, get, you can't take a two. Uh, too literally, you know, we have to have 70 in our church for us to, you know, flourish. No, but you need some. How? At least two or three. Where two or three are gathered together. 
at least two or three. It's not just one. Do you know, there are a lot of people that think, they think, I don't need the church. I can have church in my house. I can go out, you know, out on the lake. I have church out, out in the lake by myself in my canoe or, you know, whatever, in my boat, motorboat. You know what? That's not biblical. That is not what God says. Just against the Bible. You cannot have church in your house. You cannot have church out in the world, you know, by yourself. Yeah, but, and, and you know, it's just, you just can't act. You're not going to flourish. Do you know why there's so many people that are loners like that? I'm going to give you reasons why people get, <coughs> do, get into that. First, one, one reason they just don't understand the Bible and, and how they need each other. Another, <coughs> another reason is that they just can't get along with each other. They're carnal. And when they can't get along, another reason is they, they don't want to work at relationships. Relationships, you know, takes time, it takes some effort, but God, by God's grace and His, you know, He can help us through it. But some people don't, you know, they don't even want to work through it. Some people get easily offended. They just get offended and they leave. No, I'm just going to go by myself. Some, uh, <clears throat> some people are very critical, and everybody's like a hypocrite. You know, and everybody is, is wrong, and I'm right. They become critical, and eventually they just can't live with people. Uh, some people try to get without giving. <coughs> they believe the church is, I'm not getting anything out of it. Now, I've, I've heard that a lot of times. I'm not getting anything out of church. What are you giving? That's why you're, you know, church isn't about getting. It's about giving. And so they don't understand why, you know, it, you know, this, these palm trees. Look, at, look in your Bible, Psalm 91. Psalm 91 and verse 1. It's kind of interesting thought here. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, part of that shadow is the shadow and the protection you get from other Christians. You know, that shadow is shade, shade from the, the heat, the and shade so that you don't dry up so much. You know, that's why we have church. God is our, our shade and our shadow, but he's also given us each other to be a shadow for one another. To love each other, care for one another. It is important. Church is important. And it's important for palm trees to gather together so that they protect each other, they shade each other, they... You know, they, you know, there's just so much there. And that's what we need. We're like palm trees. We need each other. And it's just uh, people that don't understand uh, <coughs> the Christian life that, that think, oh, I, I can do it on my own. I don't need church. I can have church in my house. It doesn't bother me not going to church. Something wrong with that thinking. You're not going to flourish. Yes, you can still be a Christian. I don't think you're not going to lose your salvation, but you're not going to flourish. Okay, the last thing, the last thing we see in Psalm 92, verse 13. Go back there. It says, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. It's not just enough to come to church. You need to be planted. Now, what does it mean? Planted means to put your roots down. Now we have an expression, but it's related to trees. When you put your roots down, it means you're going to stay there, you're going to be faithful, and you're going to serve. You put your roots down, and the branches come up, and <clears throat> so the roots are down, that means you're going to stay there, you're going to be faithful, and then... <clears throat> 
at the top, you're going to be fruitful. And, and that's what God wants us to do. But we're never going to be, <laughs> you're never going to flourish unless you put your roots down in a good, Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. There's an expression that, you know, I don't know if they use it so much anymore, but when I was growing up, the expression was a church hopper. How many have heard of a church hopper? Okay. Just meant, you know, they'd go to this church, and after a month, oh, it's not good enough to go to this one, oh, that's not, you know, this one, and this one, and they just go hopping around. Sometimes they go back to the church, this one, and, and church hopping. You know what that that is not being planted. A, a Christian will not flourish in that. You know, a pastor's not going to pick a Sunday school teacher out of church hoppers. He's not going to give responsibility even as an usher or you know some kind of work in the church. I don't know if he's going to be here next month. He needs to be planted. God wants us to be planted in a and don't, not just in any old church, in a biblical church, in a Bible preaching church, in a soul winning church, mission minded church, in God's, the house of God. So be planted. You need to put your roots down. Support that church. Give to that church. Serve in that church. Do you know, what you can to help the church and encourage the church. Get planted. Get planted. Do you know that out of a palm tree, I'll, I'll make this short, but out of a palm tree, you can make a basket. They say they can make, out of the leaves, they can make a basket. Do you know a basket's not planted? Basket comes in and out, and in and out. You know, that's what some people are like. Not planted. <clears throat> out of a palm tree, some people say that you can make a rope. A rope. You can make ropes out of, out of the leaves of the palm tree. You know, a rope isn't, isn't planted. A rope, you know, what I call a rope Christian. A rope Christian does two, ter two things. One is they try to wrap, the, <coughs> wrap themselves around and pull them out of the church. You know? They split churches. They, <coughs> that's a rope Christian. You know? They don't want to just leave. They want to bring people with them, wrap it around and pull them out. And then there's some other rope Christians. They don't want anybody else to come in the church. Oh, we're, we're fine with them. Oh, they never invite anybody. In fact, if somebody is going to come, don't come to our church. Oh, that's not a very good church. But they say, why do you go? Well, I, I like people, but you don't, you know. Those are rope Christians. Don't be a rope Christian. Don't be a basket Christian. Be a planted Christian. Mm -hmm. Get your roots down. Get into the church. Develop yourself. Sir, minister, why? That's the only way you'll be flourishing. It's not enough just to have the fellowship of the church. You need it to be planted in the church. Planted in the church. And I encourage you to do that. Get planted. Maybe it's, maybe it's not this one. But find the church. Yeah. No? I'm probably not supposed to say this. I'm not trying to be a real Christian here and say, okay, go, go off, find another church. But I'm saying, find, you know, find God. It would be a blessing if this was the church that you just want to be planted in. I trust that you would. I, I would sit down with you and give you all the reasons why you should be in this church. Compare it to other ones. Yeah. Um, not just because it's closer to, you know, it, it's an easier drive. That's not the main issue. It's, that you, got, <clears throat> you need to be solid in the Bible. Yeah. And, and we have on our John and Romans in the back, back of our John and Romans, we have a little thing that says where Bible preaching and teaching is the emphasis. That's our, what I want our church to be. Mm -hmm. Bible preaching and teaching is the emphasis. And we don't have to, you know, 12 o'clock, okay, oh, 12 o'clock, let's stop. Okay, we got to get home. <laughs> No, we want to really stay in the Word of God and learn. Mm -hmm. And I am, I am wrapping it up here. But I'm saying we need to be planted in a church. Find a church, a good Bible-believing church, preaching church. Not, not a church that's just 
all about music. Not a church that's all about, you know, videos and, you know, movies and drama and all that. Yeah. Bible preaching church. Yeah. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish most. But to us that are saved are in the power of God. Yeah. That's what we need to find. We get planted in that church. And, and God says, if you do, you'll flourish. So, six things. You need to be righteous. The righteousness of Christ. You need to drop the old man, the old, the old uh, deceitful lusts of the old man, the leaves. Uh, number three, you need to grow upright. Get higher up to heaven and, and less of the earth. Number four, you need to stay by the water, which is Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Word. Number five, you need the fellowship of believers, just like palm trees flourish when they're clustered together. So do Christians. And lastly, get planted. Planted in a Bible-believing church. If you do those things, the Bible says, you will flourish. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for the work this morning. Pray, Lord, to help us to see where we need to use it, how to apply it, and uh, to not just be hearers of the word, but doers also. Guide us into the truth. Help us to obey and teach us to be a flourishing, useful Christian. One that you would just be pleased with and wouldn't want to cut it down, but would just want to prop it up and, and bless it. Lord, may we be a blessing to you and we would grow up.